Hello, everyone. Welcome to Aptera's Owners Club. Aptera just put out this video about the battery and uh, features one of their um, staff named Luke. And I thought we'd kind of go over bits of it and see what we can find out. It includes testing and manufacturing and design and procurement. Talk so he's holding up the cylindrical cell. Looks like a 2170. Um, that would make sense because that's the kind of the dominant cylindrical battery cell type right now. That's the one that's used in the Tesla Model 3. It could be the 18650, but I don't know why they'd be using that. The, the differences in size are only like three millimeters diameter and five millimeters in length. So it's really hard to tell just from this um, shot, but that's probably what it is. Talking to suppliers. What's clear is that they're not using um, the pouch um, flat cells that LG Chem gave to Bolt that's giving them all the problems now. So that's probably a good thing. Going to see other designs and architecting our whole battery system for the whole car. I think the biggest challenge is really trying to pack everything into such a small space and still deliver on all the other things you have to deliver for like high temperature, low temperature. Um. So yeah, it looks like they're using the cylindrical cells and it's in like this honeycomb pattern. He looks like he's designing the battery casing for it. I don't think the battery casing has to be a structural element because um, they're going to place it within the composite shell. So that's probably helpful in that they don't need to make it as rigid because it's going to be protected by the uh, composite shell. Performance in all kinds of scenarios and still make the car fun to drive. I mean, that cell has to make you fly off the starting line as well as get you 400 miles on a single charge. We're using the latest cell technology. We're using the most like system level integration that we can to get all that weight out of there. It runs at 400 volts, so tons of power. It's actively cooled for high performance, and I need to make it light. All right, Wait. so what we found out is that it's 400 volts, and it's actively cooled. I think that's two very important things. Um, 400 volts, I'm guessing that's 400 volts max, which means about like 350 nominal, which would make it the same type of pack that they put in a Model 3. And it's also the same voltage that, that would be in a Bolt. And so I think it's fairly standard um, voltage for an EV. The other things that he's saying is he confirmed that it's actively cooled, which is really important to me because I live in inland Southern California where it gets ridiculously hot in the summer. And I used to drive a Nissan Leaf that was passively cooled battery pack, and that was not good in a hot, um, in a hot uh, environment. And inexpensive, but also strong for the vehicle's frame. So lots of interesting problems to solve there. Now, I was in Detroit a couple weeks ago looking at other manufacturers' cars down to the last nut and bolt, and what I saw was some pretty cool ideas, but they weren't fully fleshed out yet. Um, I wanted to take those ideas like one step further. Design is really about optimization, and the car can get twice as much range if you optimize it. I would love to take other manufacturers' designs and just plug them in, but everything I saw was very heavy, overbuilt. A lot of connectors and a lot of cooling pumps it seemed like the people who are working on these projects weren't talking to each other as cohesively as they could have been. And it's not their fault. I mean, they're really smart people who are working on all this stuff. In companies I worked for in the past, I used to work for Hewlett Packard and that's 55,000 people. Um, you have one team for every different section of the product. Uh, but here, I'm sitting right next to the guy who's leading up the other section of the car. And he's sitting next to the other guy who's leading up the body and the chassis and the integration and the high voltage and the cables and the motors and everyone is talking to each other. Um, it's kind of impossible for us not to talk to each other. So I think that's one of the great things of having a small startup is that like everyone is it's really small so there's just very small teams and probably just like one guy or two guys working on the battery stuff and so everyone is really um, together and so there's a lot of lot better integration. Given the nature of what we're trying to do with such an efficient sustainable I love it that someone is um, bike commuting to work here. I don't know who that is, but um, thumbs up to that guy. Like vehicle, um, it's it, this kind of thing hasn't been done before. So it really does take a lot of talking and, and system integration is like the key for getting all that weight out of there, out of the vehicle. Having great people combined with having a project that I personally really care about. I mean, in, in, like making transportation more sustainable, I think is a huge, like boon to society and so on. So that's the kind of stuff you can't buy, like like people that believe in the mission of the um, company. 
And it seems like as a small startup that they've recruited people that really are invested in it. And I think that's great. Like I really believe in the charter of this company. I love it that some guy's playing with a um, golf club back there. Last night, I was dreaming about battery designs. You know, it's like, how do I get this one cell to be like 10% better? Like, how do I get five grams out of this design? So this battery system, I mean, we have this hydro-formed aluminum, which is a process where you take huge amounts of water and you like shove this aluminum into the form that you like. Um, and we can use that really cool process to create cooling channels in a sheet of aluminum in a really like manufacturable for high volume kind of way. So hydroforming aluminum, I think was used a lot in bicycle frames. And that's why aluminum bike frames are like really good now. Um, they can adjust the thickness and, and make it into these really cool shapes to um, adjust for the stresses and the flex and stuff. Um, so they're using that technology to make the um, battery casing and sounds like including cooling channels and stuff in them. That should be really cool. Okay. Um, also very inexpensive and high precision. And that allows us to take like multiple connectors and pumps out of the system completely. So huge weight savings there on a previous design. And you know, using the cell chemistries that are available now, the cells themselves have gotten like two or three times more power dense. And at the same time, the cost has come down a huge amount. So we are really at an inflection point in, I guess, what, what I see as the battery timeline. Like, when does this make sense to make a car? I think it's now. Um, I've worked on a couple of projects with large volume production. Um, so I can bring that kind of expertise on how do we get from quantity five to quantity 10,000? You know, what, what do we need to do in order to get from there to there? Because it's not easy. You had to pick between Nor, Solar, and Lunar. Oh, Soul for sure. <laughs> oh, I just I just love the colors of Soul. Um, I agree. That's why I ordered the white too. I like bright colors personally, and having like an, a white car that and you can really see the solar panels on the back, um, the charging port. Like I think the the two tone color looks really nice. Okay, that was great. I wish that they would have given us more technical specs. Um, so hopefully they will give us uh, more technical information in the future. I'm guessing that they're still working on the design and the technical specs haven't been like finalized. And so that's not, they're not giving it to us. What we do know for sure, it's a 400 volt system that's actively cooled with hydroformed um, aluminum as the casing. And they're using cylindrical cells, not pop pouch cells or rectangular cells. So, I mean, we, we did get some information from this. Um, the other thing that makes me a little concerned is that they haven't finalized the design and it is late August, and it seems a pretty hard stretch to have production before the end of this year, but I, I am glad that they're still working on it, and um, hopefully it's not delayed too much. But uh, thanks for watching. If you decide to order NAPTERA, please use the link below, and please like and, uh, and uh, subscribe if you want to help grow this channel. Thanks, guys.